Prince of the Baal Shem Tov knew that he was a pretty unique individual. He was a strange guy, and he had strange things that he did. And one of these strange things was that he just seemed to vanish sometimes. He would just be gone. You couldn't find him in the shul, the synagogue where they prayed. You couldn't find him in the yeshiva where they studied. You couldn't find him at home. Sometimes he would be gone for hours. Other times he would just be gone for days. And his students were always fascinated by him, of course. And so they were always wondering, where does he go? And every now and then, one of them would gather the courage to approach the teacher and ask him where he went. But he always had this way of just dodging the question. And so quickly they realized this wasn't for them to know. And that was OK with them. But one morning, a bunch of them were gathered in the shul, and they were praying the morning prayers. And as they finished up, the Baal Shem Tov looked out at them, and he said, you, 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 come with me today. And as the rest of them left to the yeshiva to go and begin their studies, those three students came to their teacher. And he led them outside, where there were a few horses strung up with a wagon behind it. And he said, I want you to come with me on a little journey. And immediately in the back of their minds, they're like, oh, this could be it. Is this where he goes every time? We're going to see it. Oh. They felt so privileged that they were the ones that were chosen. And so they climb in the back of the wagon, and the best, as he was sometimes called, he gets in the front, and he lifts up the reins, and he drops them. The students watch him with some curiosity, but somehow, as if with a single mind, without any control from him, the horses just take off, and they move in the same direction. And they take that wagon out of the town and into the surrounding countryside. And the further they go, the faster they seem to go, until soon it feels almost as if their hooves are hardly even touching the ground. And the students look around, and as if in a dream, everything seems normal enough, but the time that they're making. And then they stop, and they find themselves on the edge of this very, very ancient-looking forest. And now these three guys, they grew up in this part of the world. They knew it like the back of their hand, but they'd never seen this forest before. But as they were thinking, they saw their teacher had already gotten off the wagon. So quick to follow behind, they jumped off, and they started going towards the woods when the third student looked back. And he saw the horses grazing, just not tied up. And he said, Master, shouldn't we tie up the horses? And he paused. And he said, oh, in this place it's not necessary. But if you wish to stay with them, oh, no, 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 I'll come. And so the three of them followed their teacher into those dark, shadowy woods. As they stepped in, oh, that feeling of walking into an old forest, that, that ancientness, that mystery, that, that substance, they felt it more than ever before. And they looked up into these thick, ancient trees, up into these high, high branches, just gazing in wonder as they went. And as they did so, that third student in the back, he was looking up, and suddenly he sees this flash of golden light he looks up again, and there it goes. And he's mystified. He looks up once more, and he sees it to another treetop. And that time, he spotted it. There was this bird, this golden bird that seemed like it was made out of pure gold, the way it was lighting up in the sunshine. And he thought, oh, I have to see this thing again. And so he started following it from treetop to treetop, tracing its path through the forest, forgetting about his teacher, who was leading the other two students already away, deeper. And as they went, the teacher and the two remaining students came to this pond. And they watched as the Baal Shem Tov looked down into the waters and seemed to pay some sort of respect. And to do as their teacher did, they did the same. And they looked and there, in the waters, they saw, without seeing somehow, this angelic presence just gazing back at them. And they were in awe. They looked down. And the student closest to the teacher, he noticed some movement. He looked, and his teacher was already up and walking. So he jumped up. He started following them away. But that second student couldn't tear his eyes from this glory, from this mystery. And he remained. And so the best kept on making his way through the forest, deeper and deeper, until it came to a place where the trees were so thick with age, they almost totally blocked out the sunshine so that it was all dark shadow all around them. And as they walked down the path through this area, the student noticed up ahead this glimmering, this shimmering, this translucent light that just kept changing shape and color. And he was fascinated. He walked a little off the trail to see it, and there 
he saw what seemed like a bush, but it was just this flowing, changing energy, constantly shifting and morphing. And it hit him. This was it. This was the burning bush that Moses saw with his own eyes. The bush that was burning without being consumed. And he couldn't believe his good fortune at getting to witness this miracle with his own eyes. He looked at it. He gazed at it. And he didn't notice his teacher turning the path and disappearing into the shadows of the forest. Well, who knows how long they remained in that forest, going from enchantment to enchantment, from miracle to mystery. Time was like a dream once more, and before they knew it, they found themselves, all three of them, sitting together in the synagogue, back in their hometown. They couldn't understand how they got there. They looked at each other, and they all had the same bewilderment in each other's eyes. And so they jumped up in unison, and they went running to their teacher's study. And when they went in, they saw him just sitting there, flipping through a book. And they said, Master, where did you take us? What was that place? And how did we get back here? And slowly, the Baal Shem Tov closed the book. He looked at each of those students, and he said, you know... When the Jews left Egypt, not all of them had the courage to step out of their life of slavery into a life of freedom. Many of them were afraid to leave even behind this miserable life, and they remained. And of those that did step outside, not all of them made it through the parted Sea of Reeds. And of those that made it through the parting of the sea, not all of them made it to the revelation at Sinai. And of those there for the revelation, almost none of them made it into the promised land itself. And so it was. I took the three of you to the very garden of paradise. And I led you through all of its winding ways to the very center of creation, the tree of life itself. And when I got there, and I turned, it was only Correct. Correct. <laughs> <laughs>